Okay, so let's begin today's webinar. FX at one glance, so um, we're going to take a look at the financial world with a new glance. Knowledge is power. Our goal is to provide you with the power knowledge gives. So welcome everyone to FX at One Glance's Saturday morning webinar. Today we'll be discussing the Ichimoku Kumo breakout trade. Now breakout trading is one of the riskiest types of trades that you can do. However, uh, it's definitely got big potential. So today we'll not only discuss the breakout trade, but we'll also teach you how to eliminate risk and put the probabilities to your favor. Now whether you're an experienced trader or simply, you know, just curious, well, we're here to educate you on the benefits of using this kind of trade. Now, if you feel that you want to delve into this a little further, um, be sure to go to fx at oneglance.com to take advantage of the courses that uh, no other trader is actually offering at the prices that are affordable and designed to teach you. Uh, we're here to teach you, not to rob you. Now, Chaos Trader is a master of his art, and he's here to guide you and give you the knowledge and understanding that you need to become the best that you can be. Now, besides the breakout trading, FX at One Glance offers a home video course that will teach you the various types of Ichimoku trading as well as more advanced techniques. Now these techniques have really been uh, time tested and proven to help traders advance their level of skill and also get their emotions intact. Now as you know trading is about 90 percent mental no matter what the system is that you're using. Ichimoku gives you a set of rules to follow. It's simple and if you follow these rules you'll no doubt become a better trader. Now inevitably you'll become more patient and more disciplined. Now those are two major qualities that are needed to become successful traders. Of course, once you become more patient and more disciplined, um, which <laughs> may take a little bit of time, but um, once you master the patience and the discipline, you'll be headed down a path of eliminating the emotional aspect. And that's basically truly what gives you the edge in becoming a leader in this arena. You know, I thought about when I was uh, coming up with an introduction, what it is that truly sets Chaos Trader apart from other mentors. and excuse me, I've concluded that first and foremost it's his knowledge of the system. He spent many years um, really delving into this and training and learning so that he can then teach you. And then secondly um, and probably foremost and key is being a great teacher is his innate ability to genuinely care about his followers. Now we here at FX at One Glance have a desire to earn your trust and basically to keep it. So keep in mind, uh, we will open the floor for questions once the main content has been presented so you can engage in the lesson without interruption. We'll also mute all microphones so uh, that gives a little bit of courtesy to all of our participants. So in advance, uh, we want you to kind of remember and keep in mind though uh, to check back on our website occasionally, fx at oneglance.com. Um, if you go to it often, you'll kind of be able to keep informed. We'll have some summer dates of seminars that will be held in the Dallas, Houston, and Austin area. So without further ado, here's Chaos Trader. All right, all right. Um, thank you very much. Um, this is a new a new <laughs> a new name that we have someone named um chaos lady eight so i now have a marriage mate <laughs> but anyway i'm going to get started with this um with this uh course here with this uh webinar and we're going to talk about the kumo breakout so as she had mentioned kumo breakout trading basically any type of breakout trading is is very risky and what I'm going to show you today is ways to eliminate the risk because breakout trading does offer high reward, but the risk is also high. So we want to find a way to eliminate that risk. Okay? So we got to know a couple things. We want to know about Ichimoku and what we're doing, how we're trading it. So I want to just touch briefly on the system so that you understand it 
probably a lot of you already know about how to trade Ichimoku just from looking at um, some of my vid videos. You probably saw some of this content. But today I'm going to give you a little more content that you probably haven't seen. So the Ichimoku system was developed by a Japanese journalist. His name was Gochi Hosada. He spent like 30 years developing this system. Okay, so Ichimoku is a trend-based technical analysis method that measures the momentum of the market. It helps you to see the market at one glance. So you can look at a chart and like, boom, I know what I want to do. Boom, I know what I want to do. So when I look at my charts every day in the morning, I look at my charts. I trade the four-hour time frame. I can look at my charts. I look at about 20 pairs in, in less than 10 minutes and know if I want something. Now, if I see a pair that has something that's setting up for me, I spend more time on it. But I go through my pairs and look at them and make sure I see that support and resistance on the daily time frame. I always use that daily time frame because I think knowing those support and resistance levels are very important. Then knowing the structure of the market, you have to know the structure of the market. If you don't know what the structure of the market is, you're not going to understand how to trade. All right, so let's continue. So we're going to start off with the Tenkinsen. The Tenkinsen is this green line here. All right. And the calculation is the highest high and the lowest low of the past nine periods divided by two. So it's the midpoint of the past 90 periods, and it's the fastest of all Ichimoku components. And then we have the blue line here, which is going to be your Kijinsen. All right. That is the highest high and the lowest low for the past 26 periods divided by two. It's the midpoint of the past 26 periods, and it's, built, it's a built-in trend line. It's a support and resistance level. It's price equilibrium point, and it's also a trailing stop loss. This is, to me, the most important. Uh, this is probably the most important component of the Ichimoku system, if you ask me. I use this unequivocally with everything that I do because price likes to come back to this pair. It likes to come back to um, equilibrium. It likes to come right back to equilibrium, and it likes to use this as support and resistance. So this is very important to have on your chart. And I'm going to show you, you'll see how the charts are pretty cluttered, but I eliminate some of that clutter, and I'm going to show you what I do. And basically, you can see it right here. So the Tenkinsen and the Kijinsen together, they form the TK crossover signal, all right? So the Tenkinsen crossing from below to above the Kijinsen is a bullish TK crossover. And then if it's crossing from above to below, you have a bearish TK crossover. So here's crossovers. This is going to be a bullish crossover because your green line, your Tenkinsen, crosses above. So that's bullish. Here it crosses down. That's bearish. And here it comes again. That's bullish. All right. So that's a very important signal that you're going to want to know. That's also a trading uh, strategy. But we also need to know it as a signal. We're here, here we're going to use it as just a signal. All right, and then you have Sinkow Span A, which is the outer border of the Kumo cloud. It's calculated the Tenkinsen and Kijinsen divided by two and plotted 26 periods ahead of the current price. So in an uptrend, Sinkow Span A is the top border, and in a downtrend, uh, Sinkow Span A is the bottom border. And then you can see it's 26 periods ahead of the current price. So not only does this tell you past, but it also tells you future reference for support and resistance levels. So your cloud, if you're looking at this future cloud, you're not going to say this is where price is going to be in the future. All you're saying is this is where there may be support and resistance levels in the future. Okay? And then Sinkow Spam B is the outer border of the Kumo cloud. Okay, it's calculated as the highest high and the lowest low divided by two over the past 52 periods and shifted 26 periods ahead. Uptrend, spam B is on the bottom. Downtrend, spam B is on the top. And it's the slowest of all Ichimoku components at 52 periods. That's why you'll see sometime that it's flat here, and it represents a, a strong support and resistance level. Here we're in a downtrend, so you can see it's going to be on the, t on the top here. And then when we get a crossover, it goes to the bottom. And then we cross over again. Now it's back on top. And then it crosses over. It's back on the bottom in an uptrend. And again, you can see this is also shifted 26 periods ahead. All right? Now, I don't worry about looking at these two um, sync out span A and B. I don't look at it like that. I just look at the cloud. But sync out span A and B together, they form the Kumo twist signal. 
that's going to be a signal that we need also as we trade the, Kum the uh, Kumo breakout style. So a bullish signal is when uh, Cinco span A is on top and B is on the bottom, and bearish is when span B is on top and A is on the bottom. But to eliminate all that, just determine what color your future cloud is, if it's bright when you're in a downtrend or if it's dark when you're in an uptrend or whatever. Here on my chart, when I'm in a downtrend, it's brown, so I know that I have a bearish crossover, and that's a bearish cloud. And when we're in an uptrend, mine is blue, so I know without having to worry about saying, oh, we got a TK crossover, we got a uh, Kumo twist here. I don't have to worry about the Kumo twist. I just look at my cloud and I say, well, it's blue, that's, bear that's bullish. I know that I can go long. So that's the easiest thing to do. That will eliminate you from having more components to worry about and think about, such as Senko span A and B. You know, I don't even ever hardly think about it like that. I just think about the cloud. All right. So the Kumo breakout trade, I've shown this many times. It's one of the biggest trades that I trade, and I most of the videos that I put out on YouTube, I trade the Kumo breakout trade. Uh, I think it offers really for beginners the easy way to just jump into the market and start learning this because it's really easy to learn and then it does offer some big reward but you have to learn how to eliminate the risk okay so if we're going into a bullish trade here's your bullish rules you need price needs to close above the Kumo cloud and it must be the first candle out price also needs to close above the Kijin Sen you don't want to be below the Kijin Sen and have a breakout because still the Kijin Sen is like I said your um, trend line so we're using that once we cross the Kijin Sen that represents a possible change in the direction of the asset okay so it doesn't mean it's going to change but it represents a possible change and when we get to the charts again you'll see how much this is pretty pretty um accurate you need a bright future or a, a bullish uh, Kumo twist so your rules are right here you need price to be above the cloud you have to break out it has to be the first first candle out you need to close above the Kijin Sen you need a bright future or a bullish Kumo twist whatever you want to call it and sequel span needs to be above price okay your stop loss is at either breakout candle open uh, Kumo top or bottom your Kijin are your fractal level so those are going to be your stop loss levels and then you're going to exit if price closes below Kijin Sen or price closes below um, a fractal and we'll get more into that and then your bearish rules are just going to be the opposite so here they are you could see them I'm not going to go through all those you're just it's the opposite of what you're doing now all right so here we go if we're in a trade and this is a live trade that I have taken this week and it's still active I didn't close this out and you can see number one price versus the Kumo we had the breakout price versus the Kumo is bullish we're above the cloud that's bullish Tenkan Sen versus Kijin Sen is bullish alright that's number two TK crossover it's bullish okay Tenkan Sen is above the Kijin Sen that's bullish my Kumo twist is bullish here's the Kumo twist I don't really have to look at the twist I just see my cloud is blue and I know it's bullish alright but you want to know the Kumo twist that's bullish and then your Chiku span versus price here's your Chiku span this pink dash line here Chiku span is going to be 26 periods behind price but at the exact same level as price so wherever price goes this is going to also go but it's just going to be 26 periods behind it and the big thing about that it helps you to know if you're in a range or if you're you know trending or not if you're in a range what's gonna happen guys is basically if this price right here where we break out of the cloud is the same as the price here then between between the last 26 periods you haven't made any progress which means you're probably in a range but as you see price moving here and now it's way up here this will tell you that you've moved above the current price the past price of 26 periods so 26 periods ago you were here if you were still here at this time, then you know you're in a range, but Sequel Span is showing you that you're not in a range, you're in a trend, a bullish trend. Now when I get into my, my um breakout, my price is only thirty pips away from Kijinsen. So my entry is only thirty pips away from Kijinsen. Okay, and that's gonna be a big thing. We're gonna get to talking about that. But most of the trades that I take, I like to keep 
a stop loss near 30 pips and I use the four hour time frame and you probably wonder how can you do that use it's going to be bigger well sometime it is a little bigger but this is going to be based off of your risk and your reward um, your risk management and what you can uh, use as risk management and we'll get a little deeper into that too all right so here's another trade your price versus your Kumo is bearish so price breaks out of the Kumo that's bearish Tinkinson versus Kijinson is bearish number two Tinkinson comes be, uh, from above to below the Kijinson so that's bearish your Kumo future is bearish it, there's my twist right here and I could see what my future was this is 26 periods ahead of price so it has to happen it has to be happening if it was still blue then that means no go because that's still a bullish trend a bullish momentum trend but if it was brown here then it tells me that yes I can go because it's bearish and then Chico Span versus price is bearish you can see Chico Span right here is below the uh, price of 26 periods ago back 26 periods it's below that price that means we've been trending down I'm gonna take this breakout trade and the way I take that breakout trade is once price closes below the cloud I enter here my stop loss is going to be a few places. This is going to help you to eliminate risk depending on where you're going to have your stop loss. My stop loss is normally always at the Kijinson, and you'll find that a lot of times that's going to be a big stop loss. Okay, what you're going to do, guys, if the stop loss is too big for you, don't make a stop loss work. Don't say, well, I'm going to make it 20 pips just because. You have to have a technical stop loss because a technical stop loss is going to be a stop loss where you have support and resistance at that level. If I just say, well, let's make this 20 pips because I can afford 20 pips, but I'm going to get into this trade, and this can easily move back 20 pips on me, and you see it has, all right? So it breaks out, and then it it retraced a little bit and came all the way back way past this candle here a little bit. So you can't say, well, I'm going to just put it at this candle. You have to have a technical spot where price holds support or resistance. The Kijin Sen you're going to find is a very good spot to have it. So if this is too far from the Kijin them for you you don't want to enter that trade and then you exit the trade when we get a close above Kijinson there we go and that's very hard to do guys this is gonna take a lot of patience learning and understanding so this is the main way you exit the trade but I'm gonna show you some other ways that will help you to um, get out with some profit because a lot of people can't stay in a trade when they see all this and then they get a move down here and then they see this they're like well I gotta get this profit but you're not allowing your your um, profit to run there's still more profit to be made you just have to know where to get out and when to get out and that's pretty risky so we'll go over that a little bit so at times your Ichimoku charts are are overwhelming because it looks messy and cluttered but once you learn the components you can trade with just the Kijinsen on your chart because that's what I do I just leave this Kijinsen on my chart along with my cloud I don't need my um, Chiku span and I don't need my Tinkinson on there because basically I already know where the TK crossover happened it happened here where price is breaking above the Kijinsen it happened here and then I know where my Chiku span is it's 26 candles behind the current price so here's the current price it would be 26 candles behind that but at the same level so why do I need all that on my chart it makes it more cluttered and you really it helps you it doesn't help you to trade so what I do is take it off the chart and I just use this once you get uh, experience doing this trading you'll be able to just look at it and know where but if you want to know where it is just put it on your chart look at it and then take it off and leave it like this okay so that'll help you to eliminate having charts that are cluttered up and you can't see all right, so here we go with another trade, and this time we're just using the um, Kijinsen here. We don't have our um, Tenkinsen or the Chiku Span on here. So price versus the Kumo is bearish. Here it is, bearish. We break out of the cloud here. We had a, TK, a bearish TK crossover occur right here, right here, and I already knew this, okay? And then number three, we have a bearish Kumo future and you can see we had the twist here and my cloud changed brown and then the location of the Chiku span is below price that is bearish Chiku span will be over here exactly in line with this price level but just 26 periods behind it so if you just went one two three four and counted 26 candles you would end up here 
but you have to line it up right with price and that's where Chico Spam would be. All right, so that's how I do the trading with just the Kijinsen. That keeps my charts a little less cluttered and I can see things much better. And then you would exit when price closes above the Kijinsen. Again, very hard to do. You see all this profit here and then you see this move up here and then price continues down. A lot of times I tell my traders that I'm trying to teach this system that if you're trading with more than one lot, most experienced traders and traders who've been trading for a while, if you're trading with more than one lot, then you can do this because once you get us to a certain level, then you take some of that off the table and then you allow the rest to run. That gives you an opportunity to allow that to run. But if you're trading with just one lot, it's hard to do that. So, yeah, I can understand you just taking your profit and getting out of there whenever you get some profit. I'll say, okay, so the Kumo breakout stop loss levels are the Kijinsen, the Kumo cloud, fractals, and support and resistance levels. The Kijinsen is always my main stop loss level in every trade that I make, and it should be with every uh, Ichimoku trader too. Since Kijinsen is the equalizer, that's where price is attracted to, and price comes right back to the Kijinsen many, many times. Um, the Kumo cloud forms strong support and resistance levels based on the market's volatility. So a thick Kumo is a strong support and resistance level, while thinner Kumo represents a weaker level of support and resistance. So you can use your cloud, your top and your bottom. So you already have three spots where you can put your stop loss. You can put it at your Kijinsen. You can put it at your Kumo top or your Kumo bottom. That's going to also help you to eliminate risk because sometimes one of those is going to be closer to your price level and it'll give you a technical stop loss, a support and resistance level stop loss. And there you can use that for your um, entry. So if Kijinsen is too far, maybe your Kumo bottom is a little closer and that can help you to eliminate some of the risk there. Okay, and then I use fractals a lot. I use fractals basically for everything that I do. They tell me the structure of the market. I'm not going to get deep into fractals right now, but there's some videos on YouTube that I've done about fractals and everything that I show and teach you first must look at the fractal to decide what the structure of the market is. You need to know what the structure of the market is before you do anything. And if you don't understand what the structure of the market is, you're going to be confused. You're going to be getting in trades and wondering why they're not going your way. Well, you're not following the structure of the market. All right. So fractals in a long trade. And if we're in a long trade, bear fractals will be my stop loss. Okay, and in a short trade, bull fractals will be your stop loss. So when the market's trending up, you're rarely going to see bear fractals broken. So that's how we know the structure of the market. And when the market's trending down, you're rarely going to see bull fractals broken. Okay, I'm not going to get into fractals and what they are. You can find it on YouTube on my videos, and that'll tell you what, some, what fractals are. And you can just look that up. Support and resistance levels, horizontal um, levels, trend lines, psychological levels, those are going to be stop, stop loss levels for you also. So therefore, that's why I always tell traders, don't just make a number stop loss because it's not technical. You know, you make a stop loss that's 15 pips and the, the support and resistance level is at 25. Okay, so price is probably going to go to the 25 level where the support and resistance is and go right past your 15 pip stop loss. You don't put stop losses based on you can afford 15 pips or you can afford 100 pips. You put it based off of um, a technical stop loss level. All right, so here we go. Kumo breakout entry. Here's my breakout entry right here. And then I'm using the Kijinsen as my stop loss. Or I'm using the Kumo bottom as my stop loss. Okay, so this is helping me to eliminate risk. If, I'm, if this one, if this is too far, I, I can use the Kijinsen. The Kijinsen is going to automatically be, be my level. So here I would have put the Kijinsen anyway. All right, so here's a fractal stop loss, and this is in the, the trade that I'm in now. This is the trade that I'm, I have set up over the weekend. Um, your fractal stop loss versus your Kijinsen stop loss. This is another way to eliminate some risk. Look how deep the fractal stop loss, the um, Kijinsen fractal, the Kijinsen stop loss is going to be. But look where the fractal stop loss is located. The fractal stop loss is lower. The reason that I tell you fractals are very good to use is because in a bearish market, I mean in a bullish market, sorry, we're not breaking these bear fractals. 
we are not breaking these bare fractals. So I'm using these as stop losses. So if I put a fractal level here with a stop loss, every time the market moves makes a new fractal, I put my stop loss, move my stop loss up, move my stop loss up. Now in this case I would put it here because Kijinsen's further than this fractal. But if this fractal was here, I would put it here because the market does not really break bare fractals in a bull trend because the momentum is so strong that we're moving higher. But now once it starts to get closer and then start breaking these fractals, if it breaks that first fractal, that's where my stop loss is if it's closer than Kijinsen. And then the price will come down, take me out, and I have my profit already set. All right, so I hope you guys understand that. That's something I really teach big time with um, with the courses that I do with anything with Ichimoku. Fractals are a big part for me. All right, so... You can see the potential that breakouts allow. You see this Kumo breakout, 285 pips before it even really turns around. And in total, 675 pips. We would have been out here, but there's so many other ways to get into the market here. There's an entry here, there's an entry here, and then you would have followed this all the way down. Here we have another Kumo breakout. You can see it allows 260 pips, and then we finally close below this um, Kijinsen level. Can you see the fractal levels? Are we breaking these fractal levels yet? But here, if you just follow that fractal level, finally we break. And that's pretty close to Kijinsen right there anyway. So, But you can see how the market, when it's really trending, barely breaks these fractal levels. And there's another aspect to these fractal levels. We use them as um, entries also. And they're very good for entries. But then here you see we break out. We, after we broke out, we just follow this trade and we close below. Once we close below Kijinsen, very hard for traders to do. Very hard to learn to do this and be patient and and understanding that this market is moving higher when you see things like this happening. But you have to understand how the market moves. And finally, another breakout. You can see this breakout here, and you can see I only have Kijinsen on my chart. I just keep that on my chart. I don't need anything else on there. I see. I know where the levels are. You'll know once you start doing this for a little while. And it's a lot. 756 pips for me. Moves all the way down. What did I tell you before? Price goes down, makes a fractal. It should now. If we're in a bear market, we shouldn't break bull fractals, right? We're going down. Here's a fractal. It hasn't broken that level. It goes down, makes a fractal. Price has not broken that level. And then here we go. Price has not broken any of these fractal levels. But then we make a fractal level down here. We're out down here because we break the fractal level and we close above the Kijinsen. So like I said, again, guys, this is discipline to learn to do this. But it's really, really awesome if you can start to learn that discipline. And the way to do it is, like I said, if you're trading with more than one lot, then just take some off the table and then learn to try to follow that. Follow that Kijinsen. Follow those fractals. Here's a Kumo breakout that went for 1,045 pips total, but we closed out here. So we would have been out here. Again, there's other ways to enter the market. We would have entered the market right here. We would have entered the market here. Would have been stopped out here, but we would have definitely had a great trade here. This would have been a really good trade. And here's another entry for us. And just basically we learned these trades uh, from the course I teach a lot of stuff about getting back into the market off of these uh, reversals here <clears throat> but you can see this is 1045 pips on a Kumo breakout all right but not all breakouts give you that and a lot of them are risky okay but when they do go they give you the potential as you saw here 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 but then we see something like this and then you may get caught in something like this a few times and all the all the money that you made you're starting to give it back to the market well we don't want to give it back to the market so I'm going to show you some ways that you can learn to um, eliminate some of this risk this breakout failed but why and how could we eliminate the risk from these false breakouts so let's find out how we could eliminate risk when we're trading breakouts anything I tell you there's nothing that's foolproof, okay? There's always going to be something. Nothing's guaranteed, okay? But this is going to help you to eliminate some risk. All right, so don't take this as gold. 
but take it as some knowledge that will help you. You can add it to your arsenal. You can add it to your toolbox. But I'm not going to get deep into everything because I don't have the time. If I had the time, we'd be here for hours and days, and I could really explain everything deeply. But here's a quick synopsis of what we're talking about, and I'm going to break it down as fast and as quick as I can to help, hope that you guys understand. Okay? So we're pushed for time, so we can't, you know, talk about everything. All right, one thing we're going to learn to talk about, and maybe a lot of traders know about this, is divergence. We have regular divergence and hidden divergence, and we can use those to help us on Kumo breakouts. It'll help us to stay safe in some breakouts. Now, you can see what, what divergence is. Bullish divergence occurs when the indicator is making higher lows and price is making uh, lower lows. This divergence indicates that the bearish momentum is weakening and price may reverse soon. And then you have bearish divergence. It occurs when the ind indicator is making lower highs and price is making higher highs. And this divergence indicates, indicates that the bullish momentum is weakening and price may reverse soon. Okay, and then we have um, bullish hidden divergence. So this is regular divergence. This is hidden divergence. This is bullish. It occurs when the indicator makes a higher high while the price does not make a higher high. It occurs during a correction in an uptrend. It indicates momentum, momentum is still strong to the upside. So that lets you know if you take a breakout and you have hidden bullish divergence, more than likely the momentum is still strong to the upside based off of what we, what we just talked about right here. And then uh, bearish hidden divergence occurs when the indicator makes a lower low while the price does not. And this occurs during a reaction in the downtrend. It indicates momentum is still strong to the downside. I like to use a, a ultimate oscillator. It has three time frames to it. <clears throat> I think it's the best um, indicator for divergence. Now, I do not trade a divergence signal. I trade what I'm looking at off of the Ichimoku. I just use the divergence to let me know if the momentum is dying or if I still have momentum in my favor. Along with the fractals, that gives me an idea if I have momentum in my favor. And the Kijin Sen and the um, Tenkin Sen, the direction and the way they're pointing, that tells me the momentum of the market. So all those things together are clues for me. I have those in my toolbox. I pull them out to see what's happening. If I can use those, and I use the one that is readily available that works in the situation for me. Now here we're going to look at this divergence here. Here's bearish divergence. This is bearish regular divergence because this price is making a higher high and at the time when it breaks above the cloud I haven't marked. So here's the first level and here's the second level. Based off of the indicator it looks like it's going down losing momentum. As the indicator goes down, that shows that this is losing momentum. And you can see what happens. It did lose momentum, and it ranged for a good while. You don't want to be sitting in a trade like this. And if you're using Kijinson as your stop loss, you would have been stopped out. Okay? So you don't want to be in trades that are like this, and then it, it finally goes after a while. You don't want to sit in a, something like this. It's just nerve-wracking, and then you get stopped out. All right, so then another, again, the same thing bearish divergence and we're looking for a bullish breakout it didn't work you can see this oscillator was trending down this is the ultimate oscillator one of the best you can use stochastics you can use RSI I think those two work fairly well just as much but this is probably the best okay but you can see this divergence here and yes it's true when you're looking at the charts in real time this is hard to see but when you draw your lines and just keep your lines, look where the breakout occurs. Is it below this last peak? Is the peak's been going downwards? Does it look like it's been losing momentum? Because this is hard to look at and tell. So, okay, but once you start doing it for a while and you start practicing it, then you start to be able to understand it and see it and know where that level is and if that's still um, divergence. Here is bearish divergence, and you can see what happens. The trade loses momentum hangs around for a while but then it finally does go to the upside but you would have been stopped out so that helps you to eliminate that okay and then here we go again <clears throat> based off of where this occurred you could see what this indicator is doing so where the breakout occurred it appears as if we have hidden bearish divergence as price made a higher low 
while the indicator made a lower low, but at the end of completion, it looks like they both, like price made a, the same level low, while this made a lower low. In a same level low, this would be the level, and this would be the level lining up. If you get a same level low with price, but the oscillator is making a lower low, that's still bearish divergence, okay? That's going to still be um, hidden bearish divergence. So this would have let me know that when I take this breakout here, I have momentum to the downside. I do have some good momentum to the downside, and the trade worked and then came all the way back up here. So it wouldn't have been a big trade here because price retraced back to Kedenson, which I tell you, price likes to retrace back to the Kedenson, and then it closed on this side. So this wouldn't have been a big, big trade here, but we have a chance to get in the market right here, and we would have got a good trade here. So that was one way to eliminate some risk on breakouts using divergence, okay? The next way we're going to eliminate some risk is multiple time frame analysis, using multiple time frame analysis with the Ichimoku system. All right, so I have a primary chart and a, and a secondary chart. If I'm trading the four-hour time frame, which I do, I use the daily as my primary, and this secondary is going to be my um, four-hour chart. If you're trading the hourly, you'll use the four-hour as your um, primary and the hourly as your secondary and so forth. Okay, try to be like four time frames ahead. But I usually don't, I don't trade below an hour time frame anyway, and I barely even trade the hourly. But I trade the hourly here and there. But I wouldn't go lower than that. But Ichimoku does work on the lower time frame, even lower than that. You're just going to have more whipsaws. And that's true with any any, any kind of um, indicator that you're using on the lower time frame. You're going to have more whipsaws on the lower time frames. So if price is below the Kumo on my daily chart, which is going to be my primary chart, then my four-hour secondary chart, I'm only going to trade short. So I can only trade short on my secondary chart because on my primary chart, price is below the Kumo. Price is trending down. It's below the Kijinsen. I should be trading short. I should not be looking for anything long on my four-hour. And you'll see how that's going to really save you when I break it down right here. So this is my primary chart. From this point, this line here, to this green line, you can only trade short. Once you get to the green line, to the next red line, you can only trade long. Then from that red line to this green line, short. From the green line to the red line, long. And then from here on, short. I'm going to break this down deeper and show you how this saves you. By using this method, it will save you from some false Kumo breakouts. Now, I don't just basically just sit here and just do this. This is a way for some traders to do it because it's really good, and it will help you to get stay out of um false breakouts. But I also like to look at what the structure of the market is telling me also. I don't just go by, oh, we're below this cloud or we're below the keys and I'm only going to trade that. I see the structure of the market. I see that we're breaking fractals. I see what the structure is and I can see when it when that structure changes. Okay, so when that structure changes, is that going to be just a secondary trend or will that turn into a primary trend? But you, if learning that structure of the market is very important. Okay, so the first line here, we're going to show from here to here on our, on our secondary chart up close for our time frame. So we're only going to be trading short. So if we're only trading short, that, second, that uh, multiple time frame analysis is going to save you from this false Kumo breakout, these false Kumo breakouts, false Kumo breakouts here. These are not real good breakouts, but you can see the breakout to the downside. This is a Kumo breakout to the downside. I would have traded that, but I wouldn't have traded this breakout, and this breakout made a little bit of profit. And then now the structure of the market starts changing. Now the way that I'm trading, I'm not going to catch this breakout, and this breakout is the start of the real nice trend. But you have to, you can't have everything, guys. You can't have your cake and eat it too, because if you want to eliminate some risk, you have to follow some rules. So during this time, you can only trade short. So you can't take this. You, you never know this is going to happen. But you see it happen. And once it happens, now we go back to our um, primary chart. Now we're at our primary chart. And from that point on, we can only trade um, long from here to here. And if we're only able to trade long from there to there, 
look how much of the market we're missing on a Kumo breakout to the downside. We can only trade long. So you can't have your cake and eat it too. You want to be safe from some of these false breakouts that you're seeing. Here's false breakouts that would eliminate some of these. All right, but this is a real good breakout. But that's the start of a new, new trend. Now you're going to catch that later. And then here you can only trade um, short between these two lines. So if you can only trade short between these two lines, you're going to not get this false breakout. That saved you from that false breakout. But here's a real good breakout. This is a bearish breakout. You can take that one. Here's a false breakout. Here's a decent breakout, but we wouldn't have traded that. But we would have traded this breakout to the downside. And then again, the market changes its structure, it looks like, maybe. Then you had a nice breakout. And then once you get to this green line, you can trade long. So here we are at that green line. We can trade long. So all long trades only between the green and red. That keeps us out of these false breakouts to the downside. False breakouts to the downside. That saves you from getting in false breakouts, all these false breakouts. And then the market changes. Now from here, from the red line, you should only be trading short opportunities. We can trade this short breakout. We can't trade any of these breakouts, none of this. We would have been safe from this mess that you see up here but we would have caught this nice breakout to the downside. And then again, we would have been safe from catching any of this mess that you see here, false breakouts that aren't real, but we would have caught these downside breakouts. And then you're safe from these false breakouts. Now, sometime the market structure changes, you're going to miss the good breakout, but you're always going to have a chance to catch other trades. All right, so... Here's another example real quick. We're using our top-down analysis. So looking at our primary chart, we see prices below the Kumo, so we want to um, go short. Also take notice that blue line, I always put that on my chart. That's my daily Kijensen. That's the daily Kijensen level. This daily Kijensen is going to act as resistance, so when we see a, a small doji developing here, we know that this resistance level is quite possibly holding. <clears throat> so I go to my secondary chart. And I can't trade this false breakout. It saved me from that one. But then there was a breakout here. And I knew that we were sitting at this Kijensen level. The daily Kijensen is going to be a strong price level, a strong resistance level. All right, so even though this was, it says here we had 158 pips from this current level here. You have to decide if you want to go against that risk. If you're using multiple time frame analysis, you don't catch this. You don't want to trade this. We're looking for stuff like, like this. We're not looking for something like this. I mean, some traders don't mind taking just that. And I will take something like that. But I also have to know the structure of the market, know that this is just a pullback move and I'm taking a pullback trade. I'm not going to get into all that right now. I'm just going to show you how we're using the multiple time frame analysis looking at the chart. All right, so, but you can enter a short trade if we come back down and break down below this way. And a lot of times if you go back, price, this is what price is basically going to do. This is a pullback here. But if this level holds right, what happens is price holds here and price drops down, 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 which would be on your four-hour time frame, down, down, down. And that would be a nice breakout for you. All right. Another way that we could eliminate some risk, guys, and this is really big and really important for me. This is the way I trade all the time. Trading breakouts that are too far from Kijensen. So too far is going to depend on the time frame and your risk management. And also, like, each pair is a little different. So normally price on a four-hour chart will get about 200 pips from Kijensen before we trace them back to the, to the magnet that we call the Kijensen. So if you take a trade, much like the one that you're seeing here, that was 125 pips from Kijensen. Do you want to be entering a, pi a trade that's 125 pips away from your stop loss level? All right. No, that's not a good trade. I always tell um, the traders that every good trade is not a good trade because it may be a good trade for me. It may be a good trade for someone else. Maybe I can afford 125 pip stop loss, but maybe the new trader or someone else cannot afford 125 pip stop loss, and that puts a big dent into their trade to their account. So that's why a good trade for me, which would be a good trade, may not be a good trade for someone else. Yeah, it's a good trade, but the risk is big. 
Okay, so you don't want to go into a trade with big risk like that. So you can wait for these trades. These breakouts, when you're that far from Kijinsen, the odds of this turning around just to retrace or pull back are big. So you can wait for that. And then here we had a very good trade right here. All right, this is considered a breakout, but we trade this even different. All right, this is bouncing off a of support level. All right, we pulled back to support. We could get into a trade. All right, so this breakout occurred. This was 250 pips away from Kijinsen on this breakout right here. Look how far Kijinsen is from that level. What's going to happen, guys, is price is either going to retrace back to this level or price is going to range until Kijinsen can catch up to it like it does here. And then it doesn't really go anywhere, and it goes to the other side the wrong way that we didn't want it to go. All right, so that's, that's how you eliminate some of the risk. You don't take this trade. And I wouldn't even take this trade. This is too far. I know this is going to retrace. When I see this break out of this level, my first thought is, okay, retrace. Where am I going to get in after the retrace comes up? And I know where my levels are. When I trade Ichimoku, I have levels that I'm going to trade, and those are going to be the levels that I get into the trade. And I just wait for price to get to those levels, and then I make my trades. So that is going to eliminate you from getting into a bad trade and saying, well, the breakouts don't work. Yeah, they don't work if you're that far and you see price has moved that much. You know that you're going to either range or consolidate or, or um, pull back. It's just the nature of the market. All right, so this breakout, this occurred at the one-hour time frame. This is the live trade that I really am in. It's not live now because the markets are closed, but I left this over the weekend because I have a good feeling about this trade because... Also, guys, I'm going to give you a little tip here. The Aussie New Zealand dollar has went to the all-time lows. It just bounced off of its own all-time low. So seeing that, I wanted to get into this pair because a lot of times I like to see uh, price get to an all-time low. And when it forms that all-time low, it also formed a double bottom. That's a nice support level. I got into a trade, and you can see it's only 37 pips right now, but I think it has potential to continue going. So look at your Aussie New Zealand charts this week and see if you can find something there. But this breakout level on the one-hour time frame was only 30 pips away from Kijinsen. Now, it looks further because this is the hourly time frame, but it's only 30 pips. So most traders can, can afford a 30-pip stop loss. And then I can even look at this level. Now, see, I, I can get technical now because I can put my stop loss at the bottom of this um, Kumo here, right? But I'm not going to say, oh, well, let's put it uh, 10 pips. We're not going to do that. We're going to be technical here or here or else the fractal level, okay? And then finally, guys, your average daily range. You can use that to help you for um, breakout trading. The average daily range is the average of the daily range over a given number of days. So your average daily range, range can be calculated over a different uh, number of days, okay? So if a pair moves on an average of 100 pips per day over a 14-day period, then if price is approaching a breakout level and it's already moved like 85 pips for the day, then you might be cautious of entering a breakout because you think you probably have about 15 more pips potential. Now, that's not going to say that's all that it's going to move, but... That's going to help you to decide if you really want to get into a trade. If the trade breaks out and it's only 35, 40 pips and the average for the day is 100, yeah, you're going to want to take that trade. So let's look at the example here. This Between these two um, lines here, this is going to be our day. So between the lines, price moved 205 pips this day. And the average daily range is 190, we said here. So we wouldn't want to take this breakout because the average daily range is 190. We've already moved 205. So what do you think the market's going to do? The market's going to retrace, and here it does. And then it gives you opportunities to get right back into it. So be patient, guys. Be patient. Another example, between the red lines is one day. Price moved 88 pips. The, a the ADR for this pair is 190 pips. Would you take this trade? Would you take this breakout right here? If this moved 88 pips and the ADR is 190, yes, you would take this breakout, and you can see what happens. All right. So I'm not I, I'm not getting deep into the ADR right now with you, but you can use that and you can learn that. There's information about that. Okay. So is that all that I got? 
no, I have time for some questions. So do I have any questions? Any questions? Actually, my screen, I cannot see your questions. So I'm going to move on, and then I'm going to, um, when I close this out, we'll go to the questions. We'll move to the questions last, okay? So I'll answer some questions at the end here once we go through the rest of this um, presentation because I can't even see the question pane right now. All right, guys? So let's take a look at uh, some other things that we here at FX at One Glance offer. We offer some um, ichi Ichimoku uh, courses, and of course those courses um, are available to you. Um, you can take a look at our home video course uh, membership. Um, we have one, for example, um, that will uh, this first course will entitle you to a lifetime of updates um, that are added to the course, and that's at no extra charge. So if you were to um, pursue this home video course membership, there's a lot of perks involved. Um, you uh, basically can, um, we'll put some order into your trading and eliminate any ambiguity that you may have. You can uh, try our Ichimoku home course and basically start building your confidence. We also have FX at One Glance Ichimoku uh, interactive mentoring and, and that's really good. Um, we find it, it's full a lot of times but um, you know, lots of people want to get involved in that. Um, our most popular, of course, is the uh, Ichimoku Home Video Course, which is $250. It's a one-time payment. You get online video course. You get the uh, course test. Um, there are weekly webinars, which are phenomenal. And then uh, there are weekly Ichimoku video analysis that you can get, and then trade alerts. And you can purchase that, um, like I said, for 250 But then we also have the Ichimoku interactive mentoring. That's $500 for one week. Now, that is really good because you get daily online interactive webinar training, as well as online video courses. And then you also get the video analysis as well, but then you get live lifetime access to uh, weekly webinars. So you get the trade alerts as well. So all of those are really good. So if you thought that you, you were able to touch on just some of what uh, Chaos Trader 63 was teaching you today, these go into more depth. Um, we have lots of members who say incredible things about us. I'm not going to go into them in detail, but if you take a look at the screen, we have phenomenal uh, feedback from lots of people. Um, this one gentleman just up top, just to give you uh, a small uh, synopsis of what they say, is he just finished the uh, video course and he was trading live since 2001 and he can sincerely say that it is one of the most put together courses that he's seen. It has great content, um, he, Chaos Trader 63 is easy to listen to and um, you know as uh, it's, he says that, you know, it's been a long time since he's been given the structure and, um, you know, the slowness to be able to trade down. So, I mean, those are just some of the um, testimonials, so hopefully you too could add to those testimonials as well. Now, we also have a blog. Um, if you uh, take a look at the screen here, we um, have this phenomenal blog that we put together, and um, you can just go to fx at oneglance.com to uh, take action on some of these blogs, but take a look at some of them. We have the home course for members. It's a Q&A webinar. Um, we also have um, some trade alerts that take place as well. Um, I mean, there's just lots of information on this blog, um, so you can become a part of that. Um, all you need to do is go to um, the FX at oneglance.com and uh, click this link right here if you wanted to take uh, advantage of the Chaos Trader 63 forum. Um, this forum you become uh, well informed and here's the great news traders is that you can register for free. Um, there are not many people out there that are doing that but we feel that we want to give you the information that you need. Um, so you can just click on that button there and register for free and uh, you can take advantage of this forum um, that is available to you. Uh, now, if you look um, some of the topics that we have available, um, we go through all the pairs, um, we talk about other trades, um, there's a free members webinar schedule, but um, there's lots of information, we talk about commodities, stocks, um, you know, two, 
too many to name, but um, we also give you weekly inspiration and devotionals, and that's something that uh, we take pride in as well. So that's all, folks, um, but we want you to uh, remember to uh, go on to FX um, at a glance .com and take a look at everything. God bless, and remember to keep us in mind.